Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 82. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to yet another episode of the Cash Flow Diary podcast. Glad that you are here. I'm Jay, your host, looking forward to helping you increase your cash flow one more time with additional information, more entrepreneurs, because you know what? There's so many of us out there, and I want to make sure that you know them all. <laughs> Good luck with that, right? I'll do my best to get in front of the biggest, the best, the brightest, and bring you entrepreneurs from all corners of the globe uh, as much as I possibly can because I want you to understand something. Real estate is not the only place where cash flow can be created, and that's exactly what we do here is we create cash flow, you know, in in many different ways some of you you're probably better at being stock people than you are real estate people but if you're here for real estate you understand that this is a good place for it some of you you want to build your cash flow with businesses and we will bring you entrepreneurs in that vein as well but today what i really love is that we have a special type of entrepreneur i i in my opinion i think the people who go out there and are willing to lay down their lives for the very freedoms that we entrepreneurs get to exercise on a daily basis. Those are special people to me, and today's guest has definitely served in our military, and I wanna bring him out here just in a second, but for those of you joining us for the first time, here's what I want you to do. If you're saying to yourself, okay, I'd like to get my own cash flow started, makes perfect sense to me, go over to learninvestingnow.com. We have a course sitting there for you and you can go ahead and begin that journey too. And we'll be right there with you. So with that being said, let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Scott Fussell is, well, he's also a podcaster. Isn't that awesome? So here's the thing. You're going to be able to hear a lot of his information and a lot of his guests too, because I, I just have this special place for a lot of military people. And yes, you guys know Army Brat, but oh well. Get over it. It's all good. So he's the host of the Command Your Business podcast where he helps military veterans who have become or want to become entrepreneurs. That in and of itself is enough for me. I mean, I know in a lot of our properties, we do our best to house as many veterans as we possibly can. Uh, but the thing that I've seen a lot of veterans need are that transition from military life to civilian life. And Scott has managed to do so even after spending four years in the Army ROTC program at the U University of Tennessee. Uh, and the key thing is, is he's he, he didn't just graduate. He's a distinguished military graduate. So keep that in mind as we talk to him today. And most importantly, today, when it comes to command your business, I love that, command your business. It sounds like we're going to hear from a gentleman who's in control of his business as opposed to having the business control him. Do me a favor. Welcome, Mr. Scott Fussell. Well, Jay, thank you so much uh, for having me on the podcast. Really excited to, to dig into our conversation today. As am I, because I, I know... If you're not focused on, you know, how the volunteers are doing, you are definitely focused on how your business is doing today. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's been a rough few years for, for my volunteers, but uh, we're, <laughs> we're we're on the way back up. You know, we yeah, got the it's right a rebuilding in place. Yeah, it's, it's a rebuilding re decade, rebuilding <laughs> decade. Got it. Totally understood. Totally understood. Now, today, uh, I tend to think of today's entrepreneurs are kind of like yesterday's superheroes. Now, obviously in the service, you were you were definitely a, a real life superhero in that sense, but w one of the things that every superhero has is an origin story. They start somewhere. Uh, and what I'd like to know is, before you were the entrepreneur, what, 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 what's in Scott's history? What motivates you to even 
start your podcast, start wanting to help veterans, begin to help. Um, I think you have this term. Is it a veter veteranpreneur? Yeah, well, yeah veter <laughs> veteranpreneur. Yeah, you got to help me out with that. So, you know, what? where did all that come from? Sure. So I grew up in uh, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, normal middle class upbringing, uh, went to college at the University of Tennessee, and I had always had an interest in in all things military. So I enrolled in an Army ROTC class, got uh, got luck, fortunate enough to to get a scholarship uh, through that through that program. So I spent four years in the ROTC program there at the University of Tennessee. Uh, and once I graduated, uh, I got commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Army uh, and then spent the next uh, four and a half years in, in the United States Army as a uh, tank platoon leader, executive officer, uh, several battalion maintenance officer, operations officer, several different roles in the Army. Um, and I left in 1999. So I was uh, very fortunate to have served uh Pre 9/11, uh, you know, I served in in a, a time of of relative peace, so I was very fortunate. Uh, you know, I have so much respect, specifically for those people that have served post 9/11, that have uh, raised their right hand, knowing what uh, you know what this country was facing and knowing what they were facing. So, uh, you know, I have the the utmost respect for for those veterans as well. So, you know, I, I'm a a very fortunate peacetime veteran and. Uh, you know, but I, I learned so much uh, in my time in the service, uh, got out, uh, and then I started working in, in corporate America. So, uh, you know, I started working uh, with, with Fortune 500 and, uh, and global companies and, and doing different roles. You know, I, I've done things like uh, Six Sigma Master Black Belt, which sounds like some kind of uh, uh, karate job, but it's actually, uh, you know, very focused on process and data analysis uh, and I've been a plant manager, and I've been a marketing manager, and and kind of all things in between. And I think my uh, military service has has really helped me uh, be successful um, as a civilian in the corporate world. Um, and then about a year ago, you know, I've always dabbled in in small ventures, uh, you know, online, uh, whether it be small niche sites or. Um, you know, just always been interested in entrepreneurship, and I've always had a, a passion for for veterans. Uh, and and I started listening to podcasts uh, in 2013, and I got hooked on Pat Flynn, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, I listened to uh, basically consumed every episode that Pat Flynn had, uh, which led me to uh, John Lee Dumas, who I know you've had on your podcast from Entrepreneur on Fire, and I, I started listening to John and hearing his story and. And hearing it, he was an army veteran as well, uh, seeing what he had he had done, uh, so that that kind of you know led me to founding Command Your Business with a focus on not just entrepreneurship but focus on veteran entrepreneurship or that veteranpreneur. And I I can't say that I've claimed that phrase or I created that phrase, but I I uh, certainly use it. I think it's been coined that veteran entrepreneur, uh, and you know I think that's important. Uh, for our veterans today to, to realize that, you know, and I've heard it many times on, on your show that that you've got to take charge of your own destiny. Uh, you know, that coming from someone who has been in corporate America, uh, there there is no security um, in, in corporate America, <laughs> and and you know there there really is no no security, and um, you know you've got to take matters into your own hands. So I, you know I'm you know built command your business with with the goal of helping veteran entrepreneurs and highlighting what other successful veteran entrepreneurs are doing uh, is if you follow uh, you know what's going on um, in the news uh, as as our country has pulled out of Iraq as we have pulled out of Afghanistan our, our military is now drawing down and it's it's getting smaller and there are going to be more and more veterans that are that are leaving active duty and the the amount of people that are coming out, the amount of great jobs are not being created in this economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of why I started uh, Command Your Business and really wanted to to focus on and and highlight those uh, those opportunities as an entrepreneur, which a lot of people, you know, you you're coming from a, a military family background, uh, don't necessarily realize that that those opportunities are out there. Right, right. Well, you know, for a significant 
per period of time they've been told you know the va the same things or been doing the same things and now instead of especially when it comes to being an entrepreneur you there's not a you, you're not reporting to your CEO for duty <laughs> you, you know there there you're not staying up late at night you you don't have any KP duty you ain't got to there's nothing for you to do except for you now get to decide what to do which is a completely new skill set yeah, it is. And, and for, for many people, and if they look at it at a broad level, but, you know, one of the things that that that, that I've found as I've talked to uh, military veterans uh, who have been successful entrepreneurs and, and I, you know, listen to other veterans as, as they try to build something and help really looking at the skill set they do have, uh, many people would be surprised that there are really some, you know, quite a bit of entrepreneurs within the military. Some of the, you know, most um, impressive entrepreneurs I've ever met are uh, sergeants in in the army who, uh, you know, if, in, in not in a business sense, but if you look at the definition of an entrepreneur, and you know, you have this unclear circumstances, these uh, audacious goals, um, and and contrary to popular belief, and a lot of times they, you know, they they're given very limited guidance and very limited resources, and they'll they'll go and, and make that happen. So I, I want to highlight the people that. That they they if they peel back what they've done, they have a lot of those skills, you know. Certainly, most specifically, our our combat veterans uh, who have been put in just some right. um, pretty unbelievable situations, and have been able to 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 manage and successfully get uh, get themselves and their soldiers out of those situations. So, you know, I think that bodes very well for for entrepreneurship. And and to your point, you know, people have have told them that they can't be entrepreneurs, but if they really look at that skill set that they have and everything that they've they've learned if they peel back and, and really match that to entrepreneurship a lot of them are very 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 well suited uh, to becoming an entrepreneur and, and you know you bring up a, a very important point i often think and about how how we grew up what we used to do plays into the type of entrepreneur that we can become you know if we're talking about uh, we'll take mothers as a random example so, you know, any mother that knows how to get their kids up out of bed to school on time and then later get them to do their homework and then go to bed on time probably is going to be a pretty good leader when it comes to get, taking a team of people and having them accomplish a mission at the same time. And we, we for whatever reason, we discount some of the things that we were either given or things that we've gone through. And I agree with you. In no place do I see it more than with, you know, uh, military veterans. It's like there's so many transferable skills. Uh, I, in fact, let me ask you this question. What are some of the most major things that you were able to do or that you were doing either in the military or that, that the military gave you that allowed you to transfer your skills over to being able to create cash flow in your business and as an entrepreneur? You know, I think one of the things is just uh... – the ability to to learn and and to ability to mm. to learn on the fly and and, <laughs> and, yeah. and and you know contrary to to popular belief uh you know it's certainly my experience as as an army officer you know i went through my initial uh you know basic training if you will it's a little bit different for officers than than enlisted but you know i went through my basic training and it's somewhat somewhat very gave me a limited skill set to get into my first job and I had to grow into and learn, uh, you know, once I got and became a tank platoon leader uh, in, in charge of, you know, 16 soldiers and and four tanks, I had to really learn really how to lead that organization. And every role past that, there was no training for me. It was, you know, hey, here's the job. You need to you need to go figure it out. You need to talk to the right people. Uh, you need to, uh, you know, really figure out what are the the key and the, and the core competencies that are that are critical for for this role. Uh, so that I think that's what been one of the the most important things for me and and being able to get, you know, in my you know first my my corporate career uh, or since starting Command Your Business is, you know, being able to figure it out. You know, I, I when I started a podcast and and I started listening to podcasts and I'm sure you're the same way. You know, I had no clue on how to <laughs> <laughs> you know a, a feed what's a feed you know what's a... right so for me you know that that probably is, is probably one of the the biggest thing is is being able to figure it out you know i can 
you know, I believe that I can figure out and and learn anything if I if I put my mind to it. And I think our, uh, you know, the, our military uh, veterans and active duty and military spouses really have uh, have that same skill set. Well, okay, so let's talk about that for a second. When it comes to the willingness to figure it out, I find that to be, as you say, a necessary skill set. Uh, I, I think it's mandatory for every entrepreneur, except it, and the ones that don't just figure it out. How did you how did you grow comfortable with the idea of not knowing what was going to happen next? Because that's that's usually the key is like I, I want to know, you know, many people say I want to know what happens next. You know, Jay, I, I don't want to just write the offer and not know where the money's coming from. I don't want to just take that first step. But yet you're out there doing it. How do you? How did you manage to get that skill set? You know, I think some of it goes to a some of the 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 roles and the responsibilities that you're given at a at a very young age uh, and and tasked to do, um, and then also the kind of the culture uh, you know that I found. You know, people may say that the uh, the, the military is, is risk averse, but I, you know I would I would disagree with that. The you know, and I had a, a company commander that that you know that really talked to me. Uh, you know, very early on about the difference between a risk and a gamble. Uh, so a risk is something that you can mitigate and find out, hey, what are what are all the potential outcomes? Manage that as, as best as you can versus an uneducated gamble where you're going to the craps table, table in, in Vegas and, and hoping that uh, seven doesn't come up, you know. Uh, so I think that was one of the key things is really understanding the difference between the two. Yeah, well, I wish I would have had this conversation with you a few years ago because, see, I went to the craps table in Vegas, <laughs> and uh, it was the fastest, I think it was like $90 that I've ever lost in my entire life, and I was like, okay, I'm done with that. So I, that was definitely a gamble that did not work in my favor, and I have not gone back since <laughs> to figure out how to make that work in any way, shape, or form. But you don't want to risk when it comes or sorry you don't want to gamble when it comes to your business you want to do you want to take you know, somewhat calculated risk i'm assuming that's a skill set when you're aiming artillery that you you're 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 trained to do yeah absolutely you know it's something that you know you know you can't without a hundred percent know know the outcome you know that you can do everything in your power to, to learn as much as you can but then when it's time to take action you go and take action you know that you know they talk about um crossing the line of departure that's a when you when you cross going on a mission that's that's at the point where enemy contact happens so you do all your planning up until that point you mitigate as many risks up until that point but once you cross that line of departure a lot of that plan um goes out the window but you've already mitigated a lot of those risks so i you know i think that helps and that just that culture i think really uh is is kind of Im embedded in, in a lot of military veterans and and certainly our um you know post 9-11 veterans that have served in Iraq and Afghanistan have had to, uh, you know, really, truly dial into this. You know, you talk about um, life and death situations and being able to to really mitigate and manage uh, those risks. It's uh, it's pretty unbelievable. It, I agreed. It, it, but at the, and at the same time, one of the things that you gain or that I believe, you know, you gain is you gain practice at doing something that I believe entrepreneurs do, do every day, every day. You're out there trying to build your business and grow your cash flow. You've got decisions to make and decisions that affect many things, quote unquote, down the line. You know, if you're a landlord, every decision you make affects someone's house to some way uh, or degree. And as a business owner, every decision you make affects the customer experience of your product or service. So I think you guys have a very strong advantage in the fact that you've made life or death decisions. And these decisions are not quite life or death. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, you know, I, I've talked to you know, I've, I've been to several military entrepreneur events, and and you talk to the, to the guys that have guys and gals that have served uh, in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. They talk about, hey, you know, this compared to having people shoot at me, this is uh, <laughs> this is all <laughs> even a, a bad day as an entrepreneur is still a better day than having someone uh, someone shoot at you. So. So then talk to me about this. Why? What from your perspective? What what why is it so scary to be an entrepreneur for so many people? Because we're not being shot at. But why is it so scary? You you faced the idea and the concept and you've you put your you put your physical body in harm's way. 
Um, you're, why is this so scary to so many people in your opinion? You know, I think it is. Uh, some of it's that that fear of the unknown. You know, again, you you don't know the positive outcome. I put in X cash into this investment, and I know I'm going to automatically get you know Y back. I'm going to get a rate of return of eight percent guaranteed. Uh, you know, feeling like hey, the, the, you know, they there's this perception that the the corporate job or whatever job they might have is is there is no risk that hey the the paycheck comes every two weeks <laughs> you know hey that's this is great this is going to go on forever um and bam you know i've seen it several times in in my corporate career uh changing the economy a change in the business um and you know i think that that perception that that uh, being in working for someone else is is not risky i think is is what holds a lot of people back they feel like they're they're risking everything and and they could lose everything at the drop of a hat but you know if you mitigate a lot of those risks you know i think that's that's the key is is mitigating as many as you have but then at some point you you make that that uh, you make that move you don't make a gamble but you make that calculated risk and and you know you you work on getting the return and if something happens um along the way which it inde inevitably will you got that right yeah, you 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 pivot yeah i mean you figure out a you can either throw your hands up and, and surrender or uh you know you can you can turn to your right or left and and, and make that pivot and and figure out what you need to do next and i think that's uh, again something that that veterans are especially good at is as you know we talked about earlier once you cross that line of departure the um kind of the, the plan goes out the window so you you kind of react and 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 you know go for everything that that, that you've been trained to and and that you believe and you you can kind of pivot from that. So I think that's uh, something that that is really uh, a key. Yeah, uh, and the the cool thing is to understand that. But when you go in with that that mindset uh, up front, I think it gives you a very strong business advantage because I I can count on many hands because uh, that's how many it would take uh, the, the number of entrepreneurs who where we think I've thought this where everything's always going to be perfect and it's going to go up and then we're somehow you know shocked oh my god it didn't go just like i planned uh because we crossed as you would say the line of departure after that it doesn't matter the bell has rung the game is afoot as you would say and y you've got to be able to respond appropriately and i think you know your your again your military background gives you that super advantage to keep your emotions in check uh so that when something happens not if when something happens you you are now faced with the ability to be calm enough to decide what to do next so yeah. i'm kind of curious with your business how where where have you had to pivot and uh, what 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 were some of those situations in which you were like i can't believe this is happening uh but you figured it out anyway you knew that i was coming you knew i was going to stop it and give you a quick update Anyway, uh, for those of you who have already purchased the book, you know that that's there. That's great. I've got a special thing that I want to tell you about here in just a second. But those of you who are looking for the audiobook, it's coming. I'm still working on it. I haven't forgotten about you. Just letting you know, keeping you in the loop. For those of you who want to know when the audiobook's coming out and or get on the update list, it is send a uh, text message with the code uh, audio. So you're going to send the word audio, A-U-D-I-O, to 949-682-3565, 949-682-3565. Those of you listening the first time, you're like, what book, what audio? I don't know what you're talking about, Jay. Totally understood. Recently put together a book which details the 10 steps that are necessary in order to go out there to create cash flow, uh, specifically using real estate, specifically using all the tips, techniques, and things that I know are, and that could fit in one book. So that book is uh, currently available. Um, many of you have already taken advantage of that, and that's awesome. So for those of you who have and have purchased, you know, directly from the website over at cashflowdiary.com forward slash book, or you sent in a text message to purchase at um, book is the keyword there, and that's 949-682-3565, you are going to be receiving in your email a special invitation to what we're calling a you know a VIP lead generation day. So what we're going to do is I'm going to invest 4 hours live with everyone who is a current customer of any of Cashflow Diary product 
And instead of paying the normal $197, uh, you're going to get in at absolutely no cost. And what I'm going to do for four hours is go through every lead generation technique that I know. And you're going to get it. You can ask questions. It's going to be fun. I'm going to do my best to make sure that you guys get immense value and uh, make sure that you leave fired up with all the information that you need. So uh, again, some things to, to understand is that when it comes to lead generation, it's one of those topics that uh, not many people are willing to address. But one thing I will say, keep this in mind. You know the story in terms of how we got started so that this is not going to be that Oh, here's how you write that, you know, ad and, and, and place media out there because we, we didn't have the budget for that. Everything I know how to do is low to no cost in terms of marketing and strategies, etc. So if you are open to low and no cost and you're currently a, a, you, a cash flow diary customer of some kind, you're going to get that at absolutely no cost. Or you could take this as a hint. You might want to go and actually get a cash flow diary product real fast um, like the book or one of our courses it doesn't really matter to me what matters is that I give you guys an additional opportunity uh, to be able to you know build your business build your cash flow and I know one of the most important things that was at least for me was learning how to generate leads and we're going to I'm going to invest enough time to make sure that you have the ability to generate more leads than you have the time to even handle or get back with so that when you cross your line of departure, you know where you're going, you know that you have something uh, to look forward to, and you'll be able to, quote unquote, build that business, take down the enemy, whatever analogy you need to get excited, that's what we're going to do to make sure that you have enough leads. Anyway, enough of that. Let me get you back to the interview. You know, first, I want to kind of go back to what you're talking about, just, you know, when things inevitably are going to happen. Uh, you know, you go back specifically in your business and, and in, in real estate, you look at 2008 um, <laughs> and, you know, no one saw yes. that coming. Let's look at that. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no one saw that coming. And, I, you know, I, I've, you know, I heard one of your earlier uh, interviewees talking about kind of having that long term view. And and, you know, you look at, you know, investing and, and you think about like Warren Buffett. Uh, 2008 was a, a huge opportunity for him. You know, he, and he's always said, hey, when everyone is is selling, that's when you need to be buying. And, and really, you know, he has that that long term view. Uh, he understands that change is going to happen for the bad and eventually for, for the good as well. Um, you know, if, if you know, if I would have had, uh, you know, a, a, a ton of of capital and in 08 and and the knowledge uh, of, of what's to come, you know, you could have done very well, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, and it's not just always about having the resources, though, because I, I you know, to, to use the military as a, again, as a, an easy example, is you could have access to the tanks, the artillery, the, the range control, everything that you need. But just because you have access to those things doesn't mean you know how to use them. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. You know, they kind of call those force uh, force multipliers. So you don't necessarily have to own the assets, but you've got the you know something there that can kind of multiply, uh, you know what what you're what you're able to do. So it's that's a great point that yeah you, I you know didn't even need the capital. It's probably more the the knowledge uh, than anything on, on what was possible. Well, and and that's the probably the crux of everything for for me here is the fact that most of the time we we let ourselves stop taking the first from taking the first step because we don't think we can complete the last step. Well, if we go as far as we can see, when we get there, we'll see further because in, in theory, once you cross the line of departure, there's no coming back until they, they call retreat, right? Yeah. I mean, until the mission's over, uh, you know, that's, you know, you, you, you go until the, the mission is completed and, um, you, you know, that's you mean you can't say, hey, they, <laughs> the, there's a there was a detour sign and I didn't know what to do. So I came back home. That, that doesn't work. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. You know, I, uh, you know, they typically I was on uh, tanks and you'd have a, a mine plow tank. So it didn't matter if there was concertina wire uh, minefields. And again, this was all in training for me. So I don't want anyone to think that I've served uh, in 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 combat in Iraq or Afghanistan. But, you know, in training and, and certainly those people that have served since then, hey, you, you plow right through the minefield. 
uh, you you uh, you overcome those obstacles one way or another, and and you, you figure it, figure it out again and again, and as many times as it takes until the mission is done. And you know, there could be a number of people listening, like, why are they keep talking about the military? And I'm just like, there are so many parallels in the skill sets that are required, uh, be, and the. And I'm just hoping that they're picking up on the gems that you're dropping so that they can hear it. Now, one thing you mentioned uh, briefly when you were talking about learning to lead was the culture that was required or that is centered around, you know, the your 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 16 men and your four tanks, etc. How important have you found culture to be uh, at, at, during this transition from transitioning from, you know, military service over to business ownership? You know, I, I found it in, incredibly important. You know, it's surrounding yourself, uh, you know, w- with people that have the the same beliefs as you do. Um, you know, I was at a, a military entrepreneur event uh, recently in New York City called Tech Stars Patriot Boot Camp, uh, which is put on by the Tech Stars team, which is a uh, a technology incubator for for startups. And you know, they they talk about how important culture is and, and how important that leadership is. And as a entrepreneur, as a, as a business owner, uh, you're the one that, that sets it, you know, you set the pace, you know, I had someone had said that one, a quote while I was there. Um, so you set the pace, you set the culture and you set the standard. And that's something that, you know, being a, being a leader, being a, an entrepreneur or a business owner, you know, it, it all falls, falls uh, on you and people are going to look to what you're doing um, as as what the right thing to do is if if you're doing the right things and um, you know leading the right way you, you know you're going to be able to start building that culture but it all starts at the at the top how you know if you say one thing and, and do something else um, you know the the people are are going to see it and and it's going to eventually happen you know they're going to do the wrong things because you've you've been doing the wrong things right yeah in fact they'll do it 10 times worse uh or more depending on if you if you if you want them to do stop doing something bad uh, you do it a little bit they'll do it 10 times better than you uh if you want them to do something good they'll do it 10 times worse than you until you train them <laughs> you yeah uh, absolutely that, you know that that training is, is important you know i talked about i had my initial uh training as an army officer but then once you get to your unit i mean you're always doing not formal training but you're always uh, training in small units and, and training for and preparing for those contingency plans and how do you react to an ambush or how do you react to contact or you know, you know how you set up a defensive position so you're you know again it may not be that formal training but you're always planning for all of those kind of what if scenarios so that when when it does happen uh, it just becomes muscle memory and you just react muscle memory i like that imagine having the muscle memory necessary to you know pivot your business and put yourself in the correct you know position so that you can capitalize on any market opportunities and that's that can only come from practice and most importantly learning to keep your emotions in check i love it a lot now for many individuals who are transitioning uh, out of the service or just in life in general, you know, whether they're coming out of college or high school, uh, maybe they're, you know, transitioning through jobs and they're looking to do something different. They're they're learning many new skills. The primary one, I think, is that they're coming from being a job taker and they're learning to become a job maker, they're learning to create that very same culture and environment and all those things that they've been used to. What have you found to be one of the more difficult things specifically for veterans or for your business in terms of helping them to become that job maker? You know, I think one of the things is that, again, we, t- we touched on this a little bit earlier, is they have that, uh, you know, some of, some of the veterans coming out have that perception that they are only what they did in the military. Right. Uh, so, you know, one of the, one of the examples that, that I hear a lot and, and people talk about a lot is that, you know, if you're an infantryman in the Army, uh, you know, basically you you carry a rifle and and you go and attack the enemy. And there's not a lot of, you know, they, they see a guy that can go and blow things up and, and carry a rifle. There's there's not a huge market for that in the civilian work, <laughs> workplace. Well, no, you're right. <laughs> so so, you know, they get put into if, if people don't understand the skill sets they have, they get put into, oh, hey, you were in the infantry. Well, great. I've got this great security job for you. Or hey, you can go be a security job at our, or a security guard at our company. Or okay, yeah, you can probably go and, and be a, a police officer. 
Um, not, not that there's anything I, I, you know, have, uh, many police officers that I know, but not to put anything down, uh, towards police officers. Um, but you know, they're shoehorned into this, uh, you know, job role, but they have so many more skills than that. We talked about earlier, all of those leadership skills, those skills that can translate very well to be an entrepreneur. And if, if they don't make that, that connection and, and they don't know how to sell themselves, uh, you know, I know we, you've talked about that before. Uh, you know, they they don't have the the skills or the ability to sell themselves. Uh, you know that 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 they're they're really going to struggle. Uh, but if they're able to kind of get out of that that box that people have painted them in and really say, I have so much more skills than just being an infantryman. Um, you know, the the sky's the limit. And you know, I I've been to again several military entrepreneur events. And some of the companies that these veterans are building uh, are are pretty pretty mind blowing, and you know they've they've been able to get out of hey this was my role in the past but that's not who I am going to be in the future. Uh, you know one of the the veterans that I interviewed on my podcast talked about you know he was certainly proud uh, to be a veteran, um, but he wanted to be known as a successful entrepreneur who by the way, is a veteran, not, okay, this is a veteran who (laughs) also started a business, but hey, he wanted to be his, his next phase of his life was he is, was an entrepreneur who, by the way, had served and and is a veteran. Totally understood. And and learning to become this new identity, if you will. I mean, like you said, you know, there, there, there was an identity for a period of time and that's who you were. That's how you talked. That's how you walked. You did the things that that person did. And now you're learning this new thing. Here's a question for those of us that are out there building our businesses and, and growing, uh, you know, our customer base and, and maybe even expanding our teams. What would you say are some of the best benefits to uh, working with or hiring or, or trying to uh, get more veterans involved in this whole entrepreneur uh, revolution, we'll call it? You know, I think one of the things is, you know, if you talk about bringing them onto your team is that, you know, and something that's, that's helped me immensely, they may not know a thing about your business, but, but they know about getting things done, getting goals accomplished and, and making things happen. And, you know, you can tell them what needs to be done and, and give them some resources to figure it out. And they're going to amaze you with, with what they can do. And, you know, that's something that, um, you know, that, that I found is uh, some some business owners have said, you know, they've hired uh, some people maybe that have that have come out of college that maybe have a, um, you know, a very uh, prestigious degree. Um, and then they've hired some other people that, that were veterans for for a similar role, even though the the people with the, the degree you would think would be much more successful. Uh, you know, they really had to be managed. They they didn't take the initiative to, to go and, and figure things out like the veterans did. The veterans would just run with it. Hey, I have no clue on how to do this. Um, you know, he would give them a very small task and the, you know, they are, are a very large task and they might not even know what the task is, but they'll say, Roger, I got it. I'm going to go make it happen. And then they will go and figure out how to get it done. Uh, you know, in many cases before some time who's been trained and, and educated and, and should know how to do it. <laughs> I love that. That is so awesome because at the end of the day it it what really matters most is knowing how to utilize what you do have and not being focused on what you don't have and taking whatever you do have and and making the best with it to accomplish the goal and there's always the ability to go get help or figure things out and I love what you said about taking initiative. Not enough entrepreneurs take initiative or would be entrepreneurs take initiative in so many different ways. Is that, I mean, is, is that like a course in boot camp, take initiative? You know, I, I think that's, you know, something that they absolutely, they absolutely instill in, in you in, in the training is that, hey, you've got to, uh, to, to take initiative and don't react to the, to the enemy, um, but, but make the enemy react to you. So you've got to take the initiative and, and take the fight to the enemy and make them react to you and, and put them on their heels uh, versus you always being in the defense and just reacting to what someone else is doing to you. And, you know, similar to, uh, you know, to, to my journey, you know, in being in, in, in corporate America and then taking that, that initiative, you know, I'd 
I, you know, I talked about getting hooked on podcasts and just consuming everything. But then at some point, you know, I just said to myself, you know, I can sit here and, and try to, uh, train and, and learn all day long. Uh, but at the end of the day, if I don't do some kind of action, um, and, and take some kind of initiative, I'm just going to be sitting here listening to podcasts five years from now and thinking about all these great ideas and not doing anything. And, and that's, again, I think veterans, uh, specifically, and, and, you know, it's not, just veterans, but you know they definitely have that trait of eventually they just take initiative, take the action, knowing that along the way they're not going to have all the answers, but they they know that they're going to be able to figure out the answers. Well, the probably the most important thing for everybody to hear out of that is that there's there's got to come a point where you've learned all you can learn by just sitting, and it has to have some sort of experience with the information that you've taken in in order to make it yours in order to have a, a way to get to what I call the feedback loop, you know, and all feedback is good. You know, some feedback tells cause all it does is it tells you more what you should do more of or what you should do less of. And all feedback is good. And we delay too long into getting into that feedback loop. But what I hear you saying is uh, there's no fear of the feedback loop in this case. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, in, in entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurs in general and, and, you know, specifically you start talking about, you know, I've, uh, you know, at, at Techstars, uh, at the Patriot Bootcamp, it's very uh, technology focused. So, so they're very much focused on things like in the lean startup, uh, mm -hmm. from the book by Eric Reese. And, and one of the things that's key to that book, and I'm sure, uh, many of your listeners have, have heard of this book before, if not read it themselves, is that you just got to get a minimal viable product out there. And then and then you then you iterate from there and, and to your point that feedback is either going to be good or bad so if if it's if it's bad you're going to know okay well that's that's not what I need or if it's if it's you know somewhat positively received then you can build on that but you've got to get something basic out there build upon it and, and continue to grow and and, and learn because that again that yeah, to your point that feedback loop if if you're afraid of of the feedback you're, you're going to fail the feedback is what is going to make you successful indeed. As I've said before, and I say again, fail forward, fail frequently, and fail fast. That's the best way to get it done and get it over with. Um, as we get close to the end here today, I'm curious, what would you say to that person who's getting started for the first time? They're looking at, they, they want to put on their superhero tights and become this entrepreneur now. Uh, they're, they're ready to take on the world. What would you say is the most important skill set uh, that, they could go out there, begin to develop to make this happen for them. You know, I think one of the things, a you know, we, a we've touched on a just the uh, the the ability and 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 trying and and working on learning new things, um, and and I would I guess it would be a skill set, but it would be just talking to people and connecting with people in your network, and that's something that you know that I talk about uh, with with veterans and on, on my podcast is that. You know, regardless of whatever it is you're doing, you've got you. You may not realize this, but you have an incredible network out there, and you've got to be willing to open up and be willing to help other people. You know, you can't do it selfishly, uh, but just be willing to talk to people, find out what what they are doing, what what ideas, what businesses uh, they're doing, and open up and and listen, and being able to connect with people because that's you know honestly, and that's what I tell other veteran entrepreneurs is you have an amazing network out there uh if you uh a just uh, you know kind of ex expand your horizon a little bit and and be willing to 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 meet new people go out and, and seek out new people and just have a conversation with them uh you know specifically as i as i talk to veterans uh you would be amazed at how many other uh veteran entrepreneurs and, and senior business leaders uh out there would be willing to talk to you and, and give you advice and, and give you feedback. And that's something that's been tremendously helpful for me is just really reaching out and talking to, to other people and, and, and not being afraid for them to say, no, it's not the right time or I don't have time. Okay, got it. You know, I'll, I'll go and talk to someone else, but been an immensely important to, to what I'm doing with, with command your business is, is being willing to, to just connect with people. And and be genuine about it. Uh, be willing to to help find ways that you can help them and help connect them to other people. But the the, the one thing that I would say is, yeah, open yourself up. Uh, don't be afraid and, and just connect with people. It can be online. You can you can first connect with them 
you know, LinkedIn or, uh, you know, Facebook or Twitter, but then be willing to, to take it a step further, either a, if you're in, if they're in your area, go and meet in person, B, uh, get on the phone, get on a Skype call, get on a Google hangout. Uh, you'll be amazed at, at what kind of doors that will open, what, what kind of ideas, uh, you might get from that. If you, if you just kind of open, open your, open your eyes and, and open yourself and, and be willing to, uh, to be vulnerable. Yep, indeed. Speaking of connection, tell us a little bit how we can find out more about what you're up to. Absolutely. You can check out everything that I'm working on at commandyourbusiness.com. Uh, you can find the, the podcast on iTunes uh, as well as Stitcher Radio. Uh, I would love to, uh, to to connect with anyone, so uh, feel free to email me, uh, scott at commandyourbusiness. Uh, if you're a veteran out there listening and have uh, any questions or, or if you think that I might be able to help you or, or kind of connect you to someone um, I know, I would be more than willing and, and happy to help. Excellent. Well, we definitely appreciate you taking your time out of your day today to share with us. Hopefully, your investment will produce an excellent return. Absolutely, Jay. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. Excellent. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it's time to do. It's time to connect, right? He said go to commandyourbusiness.com. Feel free to go to the podcast, get more information, and most importantly, go hug a vet today because that'll help you. It'll help you feel better and understand that there are there are real people out there who are protecting the freedoms that all of us get the privilege of enjoying and using and exercising when we go out there to create business and make more jobs. I'm glad that you were here today. I'm glad that you chose to listen. And as usual, I will talk to you guys again soon. Until next time. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.